Okay, today I want to take a look at the GameCube Mini HD model that I've created. Um, this was originally designed by Bringer Studios. It uses the uh, Doll 001 motherboard. And it has got a uh, cube boot with the custom logo. Right, to start with, this is the uh, custom logo of the cube boot. These are the two models I've created. Um, the red one is the standard edition and the crystal case one is the HD edition which I've created. The case designs and all the prints are available uh, via Bringer Studios. Um, the standard version runs off an SD Gecko and this HD version um, I wanted to do something slightly differently. Um, I didn't like it running off the SD Gecko, I wanted it to be internal. Uh, also I wanted to use the SD uh, side of the uh, internals. The main difference between the two is this power board, as you can see at the back. Um, decided to go with that. There's the uh, peekaboo, so nothing uh, different to the previous video. There's the SD to SP2 converter for your SD card there, which you load all your files on. Uh, there's the battery backup and the reset switch. And the cut down uh, joystick interface. I'll show a little bit of that later. I decided to go with these um, LED strip inside the cooler. It fits nice and snugly inside that cooler rather than mounting LEDs on the uh, on the game ports. It was a bit fiddly that and uh, I thought it, it gave a better light output, a nice streamed light output on this crystal case design. Just wanted to do something different. Uh, it was going to be my original build. Uh, as you can see this uses phono sockets for audio which are taken from the AV port and it uses the digital AV port uh, obviously for the video and that. Now this model is based on the 001 which has both ports enabled, the AV port and the digital port. That's just a picture of the motherboard of the 001. As you can see there's no onboard power on this which is what makes this build a lot more difficult compared to the 101 motherboard. So on the back we've got power, the AV, analog AV uh, port and the digital AV port. This is the SD version and this runs off an SD Gecko at the front. Only runs standard definition uh, video output with through the um, analog AV output wires. It was a great starter, it was a great test. Um, I used a lot of components off the shelf. As you can see the 101 motherboard has only the AV output which makes working on it a lot easier because it has got power on board and obviously the single socket which made the execution of the modification a lot easier. So this is the HD version. So what have I done differently? So yeah, most of the stuff, that's the reset button. I'm going to think of filling those, the GameCube logo in with the resin so it stands out more. I'm also going to super glue the button onto the actual main switch to stop it sticking. Um, like I say, the main difference was that the power board is separate on this model, which had to be then be wired separately, uh, detached from the obviously the, the original GameCube and then soldered in directly onto the daughter board. There's a couple of feet because the screws stick out. Um, decided to mount the SD to um, the SD to SP2 converter there and wire and hardwire it in internally. Um, that's where it would normally sit is in the base of the uh, GameCube in that little holder. Um, but decided just to hardwire it internally so it's all all nice and neat inside. There's the wires that I've wired directly from the power board directly into the uh, power supply uh, input socket of the actual uh, GameCube motherboard. Uh, this is the GameCube controller board which you have to cut down and splice along that line there and if you can quite see that white line with the battery there's a faint on the other side a faint scribe line I did just before um, cutting in it and you end up with it a board like that so once you've got all the main hardware done you've obviously got to get the uh, software side of it done so you go to this uh, the cube boot website and it does show you um, where all the files are located um, there are three or four files you're going to need to put on your SD card if you want the cube boot and the cube boot and the custom logo. Um, so you're going to start off with the uh, cube boot doll and the cube boot um, inny there and the fallback. I'll show you all the files. So this is the the logo generator. So you can write in whatever text you want to say when it boots and you obviously click submit it downloads a file as well as show you it at the same time so it's, it's a really good way to play around with the different ideas of naming obviously I just named mine GameCube HD on this particular instance you're going to need a copy of Swiss so head over to the Swiss website and gather whatever obviously the latest version of that is at the time 
So we'll grab a copy of that and save that. That's great. So once you've got uh, all your files, you open up Swiss, open up, go to the doll section in all in your Swiss download, get your doll file there, your Swiss doll file, and just drag it onto a file. You can drag it straight into an SD card. You can just drag it to a a file you've just created straight away. Then drag over all of your other files, which are going to be uh, qboot.doll, your qboot.ini, and your fuelback.bin. So we're going to have to rename these. So uh, Swiss, we're going to rename to boot.doll. As you can see, I didn't get that right. I, uh, I corrected that later on. So the Swiss needs to be um, boot.doll and the uh, qboot.doll needs to be ipl.doll uh, to allow that to work. Then you've got your logo there. So we'll click on the configuration file. So just click to get rid of these little uh, symbols there just to enable all of those features. And then just save it. So then you can choose the colour of what you want your... GameCube logo to be in. Um, so I just happen to know that CCFF00 is that lime green sort of colour. So we'll save that. The logo PNG obviously is the, is the logo file you've just created, which is there. So there's what you should end up on your file, on your, your um, SD card backup. So once you've got all those files renamed, this is what you should get. So I've just name queued that GameCube Mini HD. It loads straight up into Swiss as normal. You have a game folder on there as normal, which you can put all your ROMs on. And then obviously you can boot as you would completely as normally load into Swiss and play your GameCube games all the same. So just to show it obviously running, um, I've had no problems running with the SD to SP2 adapter. Um, it runs lovely. I've got no stuttering or slowdown on any of the full motion video. And uh, it plays game, games and loads everything absolutely fine. So really pleased with the way that it's decided, it's worked out. Um, like I said, this this version wasn't meant to be. I, I um, tried to get this HD GameCube Mini working, um, and I didn't realise at the time that I'd actually got two of the pins when I'd when I'd sh um, disconnected the power board and, and wired it into it directly I really I didn't realize that I got two wires the wrong way wrong way round um, and it the boot the GameCube wouldn't boot at all and I thought I'd bricked it um, it was just by coincidence that I went back to the project and just had a quick look before I threw it in the bin um, then I realized that I'd actually wired it up incorrectly so I went over it recorrected my error and the GameCube booted so that's what's led to me creating this HD version. Again, this was, I'd got a spare GameCube. This version of the GameCube is much more common in my area. Um, the other versions are a lot more expensive and uh, a lot harder to come by. Um, but I, I wanted, once I'd wet my teeth on it, I actually wanted to do it. And that's why I did eventually do the SD version. But it was great to see this version actually come to fruition. So I'm really pleased with that. Well, if you made it this far, um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.